have with you and I just believe that where we are is where God want us to be because where he's taken us is greater than we've ever been in our entire life and while you're, you're holding that hands just I know you're tired you've been here all week some of you and you've been working and I want you to do this just squeeze strength into somebody's hands just say be strengthened in Jesus name just tell them just ask God to do something for them be strengthened touch the body from the crown of their heads to the soles of their feet God strengthen their life strengthen their mind strengthen their soul strengthen their spirit God in the name of Jesus where they're weak and where they're lack God feel it to capacity until they have to enlarge their territories we're grateful right now God for what you've already done and we're rejoicing and looking forward for what you're about to do. We're grateful today, God, for daily bread. Thank you for daily bread. Our daily substance today, our strength. Thank you for our healing. And we thank you, God, for healing our bishop, healing our father. We're grateful today, God, that you did not allow the enemy to have his way. But you left him here for us, God, that he may continue to teach us and preach to us, that he may be our leader. And we're grateful, God. We pray for Mother Young as well, God, that you would touch her body. Give her strength, God. Give her what she needs, God, that no one ever knows. But bless her indeed, God, that she would have no room to receive. We're grateful now for this church and this ministry. And we pray for these moments that you have to give to us that we will speak a word to these thy people, God, that they may be blessed of you, that they may hear what it is that you have to say unto this church. We're grateful now in Jesus' name. And all the glad hearts loose those hands and give God great praise. Come on, give him a better praise than that. And then just throw your arms around somebody and tell them thank you for praying for me. Just throw your arms around them and tell them thank you. Thank you for praying for me. And while we are standing, I want to thank God for my bishop. Let's give God great praise. I, it does my heart so well to see the bishop. Amen. In praise today. Come on, give God great praise. And I and I, and I and be seated. You can be seated in his presence. And we're grateful for mom. Amen. I had the opportunity to spend some time uh, with him yesterday. And, uh, and, uh, and it was a grateful thing for me being away from here, uh, not being here as much as I would like to. Uh, they're in Texas, in Houston, my hometown. But just so grateful, amen, to spend some time in this beautiful home, amen, with the bishop and, uh, and just talking. And he's ministering to me and talking to me. And I'm grateful for that in Jesus' name. And uh, I'm a person that, uh, that honor leadership. I respect leadership. I'm the type of guy that, uh, and I know everybody's not like this, but I wish we still had sons around that when uh, the bishop say something, Dr. Myron, we don't say, Bishop, I'm going to go pray about it. Because he said it, we just go do it. See, I know I lost the church just that quick because I don't know, I don't know what it sounds like to tell my father, let me pray about it. I need you to go to the side of the hill. Let me pray about it. No, well, no, there's no praying about it included. This is what I want you to do. And, and the reason why I say that is because I'm inclined to believe that, that whatever perception you have of your leader, you would trust him and follow him and do whatever he asks of you to do. But the Bible says that the truth of my woman noticed something about Elijah. She built a part of a house so that when he come through, he stays there at the house. He did it. She did it because she perceived, perceived him to be a holy man of God. What's interesting about that text is that Elijah says, because you've done this, I've got to do something for you. Ask the servant, what is it that she needs? The servant says, well, I don't hear the paddling of the feet. There's no children in the house. Elijah, this is the crust of it. Elijah did not say, God, bless her with a child. He didn't pray to God. He just spoke it. He spoke it because, watch this, she perceived him right. 
And anytime you perceive something right, you will receive from them, no matter if you understand it or not. Give God great praise for your leader, your bishop, my bishop, my father. <laughs> Grateful for him, and I love him to death and love you too, mom, in Jesus' name. Genesis, the first chapter, uh, the first chapter and the 26th verse. I am so happy to be among family, and a lot of my friends are here. Uh, that I've seen that uh, that have stayed. I saw Elder Ford here. I saw uh, David. I told David. You know, I told David. I said, "Man, you ought to come play the organ for me for, uh, for old times' sake." David would play for me every time I was in San Antonio, uh, uh, there in Central Texas somewhere. David has always been a supporter of me and my ministry, and we're grateful to see him and his wife in Jesus' name. And we love him, Amen. We love him uh, to life, and just so many. Don't want to call names so many that I know personally by name and those by faces. We're grateful to see you uh, in Jesus' name. My wife does uh, send her greetings, uh, Marviette, and she just hate that she couldn't have been here this time to be with our family. And, uh, and my little son, PJ, Patrick Jr., cannot wait to get to the vessel. Uh, cannot wait to get here, and so we've got to make a special trip so he can come uh, in Jesus name Genesis again the first chapter and it would be the 26th verse uh, and God said let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and, o and over on the earth and, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth and the church said amen, amen. the subject is not going to make sense until I start uh, in my message today but I want you to give somebody my subject look at somebody and tell them watch me live look at somebody else on the other side tell them just watch me live just, just, just watch me live. I know you, you. I know you've been hearing some things negative about me, but watch me live. I know, I know you've been seeing some things, and you, you think you've been noticing some things, but watch me live. You may be seated in Jesus' name. Thank you, Mike. Genesis is known as uh, the book of first mentions. It records the beginning or the start of things. If you ever wanted to know what was on the mind of God concerning mankind, the first book to look into is the book of Genesis. It is the first mention. It's the start. It is how things was supposed to be for man. It gives us the blueprint of how we should operate here on earth and in this preachment today Dr. Williams by the help of the Holy Spirit I want to show you or teach you how to get things in your life that has been held up now maybe this is not for everybody but there are some things that has been held up for you that, 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 that you need to learn how to get your stuff released Tell somebody I'm getting my stuff released today. I know you might have said it last Sunday or the Sunday before last or the Sunday before last or the Sunday before last or last week or last month or last year. But that's got to come a time in your life that you believe what comes out of your mouth. Again, look at somebody and tell them I'm getting my stuff released today. First things first, we've got to uh, examine and uh, uh, and realize how God operates and from the conception of, uh, of even speaking the earth into existence and creation we need to find out how did God recreate a world that was destroyed and so God creates the world from Genesis the first chapter the third verse through the 25th verse you will find a record of God creating the world only by speaking over over and over and over and over again <laughs> never put his hands on it he only spoke it 
God said and he saw. God said second day and he saw. God said third day and he saw. God said fourth day and he saw. God said fifth day and he saw. For 5,000 years, all God did was speak. That's equivalent to five days in man's time. One, one day is as a thousand years to God. So God said these things and, and he, 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 he knew what he wanted because he is the God of creation. When God, take note of this, you've taken notes of whatever you're doing, tweeting to Facebook and whatever. Whatever God wanted something to happen, he spoke it. He didn't connive. He didn't like, you know, pull somebody down. He didn't like shift some things around. He didn't, he didn't lie. You know, he can't do that anyhow. But, but he didn't manipulate. All God did was spoke it. And, and the problem with us is we don't speak it. We talk about it. I need help from that section right here. Right here. See, the difference between talking about it and speaking it is talking about it is just you just loosely saying things and you have wishful thinking. But when you speak a thing, you have confidence because you have authority. There's a thing that I have adapted now in my church that when we hear people that are going through or people that are down or situations that are happening in their life, we don't pat them on the back and say, oh, baby, I'm sorry. Things are going to work out. It's okay. And you start crying with them. We have taken authority over everything that causes hardship, pain, and suffering to the body of Christ. And we let you tell what's going on, but in return, turn we take authority come here give me your hand and I take authority over sickness in the name of Jesus you will be healed you will be delivered and you will be set free if you're looking for a sad song I'm the wrong one to talk to I'm speaking life to everybody I come in contact with I need you to tap somebody tell them I need you to live I need you to live you've got to know that you have a kingdom voice and the reason I know you have a keen divorce, the scripture says, whatsoever you bind <laughs> on earth, that's nothing that you do with your hands, you bind it with your mouth. Whatsoever you loose on earth, it will be loosed in heaven because you have kingdom authority. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is, it is, it is you to understand that, that we have the ability, you need to discover this, that we have the ability because we have been created in God's image and after his likeness to speak things into existence. Jesus says it like this in John 6 and 6 to 3. It is the spirit that quickens the flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. I need you to tell somebody and tell them, I need you to come back to life. Uh, Y'all saying it dried up. I need you to look and tap somebody around you and tell them, I need you to come back to life. I need you not just to survive, I need you to live. For I have come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. By the time we get to verse 26, God does something. If you look at it again, rehearse. If you look at Genesis 1, first chapter, third, third verse through the 25th, he created it. By the time you get to verse 26, God does something differently. Everything previous to verse 26 was made, check this out, with a seed after its kind. <laughs> everything was made with the seed after it's got let me explain to you I'll go through it just real quickly night and day are the seeds from God creating light the sky is the seed from God creating the heavens seasons and stars are the seeds from God creating the sun and the moon Fish and birds are
are the seeds from God creating the oceans, the heavens, and the skies. Vegetables is the seed from God creating from dry land separating it from the ocean and God put in the herb plants vegetations and fruit it's now, now check this out in what God created in all of those it gave it the ability to produce seed bearing after itself in other words God gave everything he created the ability to reproduce itself without the assistance of any other living thing. Every plant has the ability to produce itself. That's why you don't eat the whole thing, save 10% and put it back in the ground. Y'all quiet right there. <laughs> he gave it its ability to bring forth so that at the time that it is needed, it is ready to reproduce itself what God said God spoke to its potential God spoke to every creature and every creation potential to give him what he wanted and so as we understand what it is that God is saying God is simply telling us that by now you should have learned that whatever God wanted to happen in this world he spoke to what was holding it. Let me explain. The sky has the potential to bring forth birds. So God spoke to the heavens and says, let the birds come forth. <laughs> when God wanted fish, he didn't speak to the sky because there was no potential in the sky to produce fish. So he spoke to the oceans and said fish and living water creatures come forth <laughs> when God wanted herbs and green and, and vegetables uh, 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 for substance he didn't speak to the sky he didn't speak to the waters he spoke to the land because the land had the potential to release what was holding what God wanted <laughs> And so what God is saying, uh, whatever you want, creation has already been created. All I need you to do is take kingdom of poverty and speak to stuff that's holding up your blessing. Speak the stuff and tell it, let it go. I wish I had a witness in here. They can have you bound up in grave clothes, but you got to do like Jesus says, loose him and let him go. Because you have the authority, you can speak those things that are not as though they were tell somebody I'm getting my stuff released today 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 I'm getting it released today I can't wait another day I'm hearing the message and the message is telling me that I have the ability to speak to whatever's in creation so that I can have whatsoever I ask I'm getting through it and so Look at part two of it. You would understand that everything again previous in Genesis 1 26 was made with the seed of this kind. So God looks at creation and he looks at the earth and he realized he needed someone to have authority in this realm. <laughs> he needed somebody to have authority in this realm. So God comes up with an idea and he looks within himself and said, let me make a seed after my kind. <laughs> Let me make something that operates like I operate. See, some of y'all just cheap. You just cheapen God. You reduce him down to nothing below man. You, you think, you compare how man treats you. You compare the same thing to God when God says, I'm much bigger than that. I'm much greater than that. I can do things that you can't even imagine in your mind. I'm able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you may ask or think. In other words, God has the tendency to overdo things. You know, he just does too much. You just didn't nobody ask for all of that. I asked you for a, a, just a job, but you gave me a full-time job with full benefits. I just asked you for a nice place to live, but you just went over and above and you gave me a five bedroom 
with free bath and three door garage I just ask you for something simple and you just keep blowing my mind why is God blowing your mind it's because you opened up your mouth and you spoke it and the Bible says you shall have whatsoever oh. tell somebody I'm getting my stuff released today so God said let me let me create a seed everything else has a seed after its kind I need something myself so God says again in my in our text scripture let us make man in our image after our likeness now, up until this part we know nothing and there is no now check this out everything that God spoke to had the potential right to produce remember y'all remember that you've been following me right everything he spoke had the potential to release it when he wanted man there was nothing in the universe that he can use to reproduce himself he spoke it and the universe went crazy and said where are we supposed to get the material to bring forth anything that operates and look like God even the angels look down and says what is man that thou art mindful of him what is it that thou was visited him what is it about man they looking for everywhere what God did God looks in the mirror and says I will make man in my image after my likeness and however I am I want him to be the same way <laughs> tell somebody I look just like God that is a deep thing look at somebody and tell them I act just like God who gonna jump right there I act just like him every time you see me I talk like him I, oh my son I, I speak like him I, operate like him every time you see me you see an example of what God has created me to be somebody clap your hands and shout thank you Jesus there was no substance there was no materials to create man so God himself created because he wanted a seed that was just like him if you notice know creation and the order of creation if you notice know placement somebody say placement notice placement he did not create man first because watch this everything that man needed had to be created before we ever got there y'all missing that man's whole world was already in place by the time he got there he needed the sun for vitamin e y'all quiet it in. he needed the water because his body is made out of water to keep him from being dehydrated he needed the vegetables and the herb to keep his body well because he came from the same ground and everything god did he put it in place before man ever got here but check this out because Genesis 2 and 4 can you put that one on the screen Genesis 2 and 4 says these are the generations of the heavens and of the earth I'm almost there and they were created in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens and every plant of the field before it was in the earth check this out every plant that's fifth verse the fifth verse every plant of the field before it was in the earth and every herb herb of the field before it grew for the lord god had not caused it to rain upon the earth and there was not a man to till the ground all I'm trying to tell you is God put everything in place but it didn't grow until man got here can I tell somebody this real quickly before you go take your first snort to sleep let me tell you that maybe things are not growing in your life is because you hadn't got in place because the moment you get in place then things are going to start lining up and the Bible says things will start to grow if you're out of place it's nobody to till the ground if you get in place you're there to dig it up uprooted flipping and turning around you ought to look at somebody and tell 
done get in place get in place get in place you missing out on a whole lot of stuff because you out of place you in everybody else's business you tend to other stuff when you ought to be in your own place seeing about your father's business somebody shout glory say I'm getting back in place I'm getting back in my position because this is where I need to be this is my last point and I'll fly my kite out of here notice I don't want you to miss this part don't miss this part Genesis 1 and 27 I'm staying right in Genesis have you noticed because that's where it all begins <laughs> let, me, let me give you something to really dance about because there's something about knowing your place and your authority in what God has set you to be Genesis 127 so God created man in his image uh huh in the image of God created he him watch this male and female created he them 28 verse and God blessed them and God said unto them everybody read that part be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea over the fowl of the air and over that moves upon the earth y'all get ready for this it blew my mind Myron it blew my mind right here he says God created he him male and female created him then but when I checked the text, the scripture bishop, man's body was not created until Genesis, the second chapter. <laughs> I'm reading that God created, not thought about it, not thinking about it. It says God created. ED, last time I checked, been a long time since I've been in school. ED puts it in the past tense, mean it already happened. Am I still right? I don't know if things changed or not. <laughs> that means it already happened. What God created was male and female together. Where did you get this from? To where you create man's body moments later. He creates man body in Genesis 2, fourth chapter, two in the second verse. Then he turns around and creates woman from the rib of a man, Genesis 2, 21, 22. My question is, who was he talking to in this particular scripture? He created male and female created them who was you talking to when you blessed them who was you talking to when you said to be fruitful to multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over it who was you talking to if man didn't get here until moments later there was no ears, <laughs> there was no eyes, there was no nose, there was no mouth or no touch. That's the five senses just in case you didn't catch it. In other words, God was not talking to the body of a man. He was talking to the spirit. I wish I had a witness in here. Oh, so some of y'all caught that one, three, four, five, six. He was talking to the spirit of mankind. And when God talks to the spirit, that's neither Hebrew, Greek, or Jew. That's neither male or female. When God gives a command, he commands your spirit. Lord have mercy. It's not about your physique. It's not about how tall you are. It's not about how short you are. It doesn't matter what color you are. It doesn't matter how you look. It's all about your spirit. And if you have the spirit of God living on the inside of you, God is telling me to tell you that you need to dominate your world. You need to be fruitful. You need to multiply things around you. You need to replenish. Look at somebody tell them I'm going to speak in spirit. 
Tell me every time you see me, I'm a speaking spirit. Oh, y'all crying in here because some of y'all got a cussing spirit. But then you ought to have a speaking spirit. When I bless you, things happen. Lord, have mercy. He said, I'll bless those whom you bless. I'll curse those whom you curse. God is talking to your spirit. And if you haven't caught revelation yet, something wrong with you because you need to understand right now you have the ability to get out of the flesh, get into the spirit and speak those things and call what's holding you up. Can somebody practice it right now? Before you go home, can you jump to your feet and can you call something that's been held up? Can you call something that's been oh God, some, some of y'all catching it? Some of y'all still in flesh. I need some of y'all that know how to get in the spirit. Start calling those things that's been holding your miracle. Start calling those things that's been holding your blessing. And God gives us the tools, and the tools God gives us is the tongue for death and life are in the power of the tongue and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof which means you have the ability to speak things right now and command production in your life you ought to just say I'll never be broke again you ought to say I'll never be sick again you ought to say I'll never be hurt again I take authority over my world I take authority in my space I take authority in my home and go to your house and say Satan the Lord rebuke you get out of my house get out of my family get out of my loved ones because I am a speaking spirit every time you see me you see flesh but don't be afraid of what you see you need to be afraid of what I say cause I can have I can have whatsoever I say can I get you to say something in this atmosphere and tell God to release it release it I'm learning every day stuff we asking God to do he's looking back at you and said I've given you the authority to set yourself you asking me for money I've given you principles to get money released you're asking me for joy when I've given you the ability to get what you need look at somebody and tell them neighbor tell them neighbor stop telling God about your problems and start telling your problems about your God tell your problems go yonder in the midst of the sea get out of my face I ain't having this you want to clap your hand and say I ain't having this I ain't having this trouble I ain't having this heartaches I ain't having this sadness yeah 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 tell somebody I'm on assignment I'm on assignment I'm behind Y'all better say it. I'm behind schedule. But today, that preacher from North Carolina just put me back on schedule. What I should have had five years ago. I, 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 I'm getting it before this week is out. What I should have had. What I should have had two years ago. The ability to get it today, 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 today. Give them a today praise. Yeah. Tell somebody I'm closing the book. Can't get it all. Tell somebody to watch me. 
to be laid out. Watch me live above measures. Why die before your time? Why be sick? Others are healed. Why be broke when all you gotta do? Open your mouth. Open your mouth. And the reason why John the Baptist can leap in his mother's womb when he didn't have eyes, he didn't have ears, he didn't have a body. So that means, watch this, when you leap, it's a physical outward expression, expression. on the inside, your spirit about to lose it. Cause your, I need to prophesy to somebody, your spirit just saw something that is about to happen to some of y'all by Wednesday of this week. That's why some of you are jumping. That's why some of you are leaping. That's why some of you are clapping. Your spirit. Your spirit. Your spirit. Your spirit just saw something. Somebody, shake somebody by the hand and tell them, neighbor, my spirit just saw three of my prayers being answered right now. Watch me live. Watch me live. Watch me live through. The serpent, the, the serpent fastened itself to Paul's hand. It is. But the snake was not revealed until the fire started up. Don't miss it. All I'm trying to tell you, if you get on fire, snakes in your life. I got help over there. It's not over here yet. If some of y'all get on fire and start rejoicing like you just got what's been taken from you, all the snakes in your life that been holding on to your hand trying to keep you from getting another level has just been revealed. And now you can say, delete, 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 delete. I don't need you. Delete, delete. I'm going. Look at somebody tell you, you gotta forgive me. Tell me, excuse me for about 30 seconds. I just saw some snakes that's been revealed. I'm getting ready to praise God for sure. These are snakes. I see all of them. Can I tell you something? Let me tell you. And this is for real. This is for real. I need y'all to hear this. The reason why Bishop couldn't have died and the reason why some of you been through sickness and you couldn't die was because God has more use for you on earth. <laughs> you in heaven right now he got some stuff for you to do here on earth so he ain't in a hurry trying to get you to heaven I know some of y'all say I can't wait to see him I can't wait till you start speaking into this earthly realm thank you sir 
oh, I just, I just feel like laying down and die. Oh, you ought to feel like getting up and open up your mouth and take authority over your life. Stop being in a hurry to go to heaven where you can give God glory here on earth. How do you give him glory? How do you give him glory? You know how you give him glory? You stand up in the midst of it and say, I shall live and not die to declare the works of the Lord in the land. So, so David, the snake was on Paul's hand and he shook it off. They saw the snake and they stood back watching, waiting. They waited in a minute now. Just in a minute now. What did you say? say five days? In a minute now. In a minute now. It's nowhere in the world. Watch this. Ain't nowhere in the world. He can survive that bite. Who just caught that in the Holy Ghost? The snakes that bit you are waiting for you to die. But don't know it ain't about my flesh. It's about the spirit. And even though, even though you had venom in the snake, it wasn't the bite. It was the venom. But when you got the Holy Spirit, everything that afflicts the flesh can't touch the spirit. Because God says, I'm the only one that has the ability to destroy both soul. So everything that comes to you, you just shake it off. I got shakers over here. When it comes to you, just shake it off. And tell the devil, watch me live.